Hello and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, webinar where we will be discussing the biological treatments which have been developed by the Water Development Division at ET Taiwan. Uh, the session is going to be divided into two parts, where the first half of the session we will be discussing the anaerobic processes of modified upflow uh, sludge, anaerobic sludge bed, the anaerobic fluidized bed, and the aerobic process of Bionet. This is the first half of the session, which will be covered by Dr. Kwon Fu Chang. The second half of the session, uh, we will be discussing e tree uh, strategies for reduction of sludge in the wastewater treatment process, and uh, the, uh, discussing this, uh, discussing these strategies and technologies will be Dr. Xing De Chen, who is the uh, from the Water System Division at uh, e tree Taiwan. At the end of each session, we will be uh, having an interactive Q&A, so you can ask the panelists uh, whichever questions you choose to, whatever questions you may have. Uh, also, uh, we will be providing a certificate of participation to all the attendees of this webinar. So thank you everybody for joining us for this session. Uh, the first panelist uh, for the session is uh, I think is uh, Dr. Kwan Fu Chang. Uh, Dr. Kwan Fu, if you could please turn on your camera so we can hey. all see you. Hi, good morning. Hello, good morning, Hi. Dr. Kwan. Good, good morning, Dr. Chang. So, Dr. Hi. Chang is the manager of the water system R&D department at the Material Chemical uh, Material and Chemical Research Lab uh, at E3 Taiwan. He received his PhD in environmental engineering in 2002 and he joined uh, E3 soon after. He's currently working on developing large scale applications of anaerobic processes to treat effluent produced at various industries such as food, chemical, petrochemical in Taiwan, Malaysia, and China. So, thank you, Dr. Kwan, uh, Dr. Chang, for joining us and uh, presenting these technologies. Over to you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good day, everyone. And uh, <clears throat> I'm Kwan Fu Zhang from Taiwan. And uh, I will give you a um, talk about the uh, biological treatment processes which developed by e -tree. And uh, okay. And uh, my talk contains about uh, three parts. First will be a very simple fundamental of biological treatment. And uh, second, I will introduce an, an aerobic processes for a reactor type of uh, UASB and AFB. And third part of my talk is uh, aerobic process. Uh, we call it Bionet. Okay. And uh, first, in the, I will introduce the, what's the biological treatment. Uh, actually, biological treatment is a group of uh, bacteria or archaea. And uh, the, oh, sorry, the substrate, substrate will be organic or ammonia. If uh, you, the substrate is organic, then after metabolism of uh, bacteria, it will produce a uh, transfer organics to carbon dioxide and uh, water. And uh, in anaerobic, anaerobic process, the organics will be transferred to methane gas and uh, carbon dioxide. And for ammonia, uh, it will be oxidized to nitrate. Uh, it is a very uh, common process in wastewater treatment. Okay, so it's a very simple a group of uh, microorganisms in a reactor. Then we input some wastewater for substrate. 
then we can get some clean water. Okay, this is a very simple biological treatment process. And uh, there are very many kinds of uh, microorganisms applied for wastewater treatment. Uh, for example, we have some uh, aerobic process and uh, some anaerobic processes. And uh, in aerobic process, the electron donor is organics and uh, electron acceptor is oxygen. So the uh, organics will be oxidized to, like I said, carbon dioxide and water. Then the, 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 it will be finished for wastewater treatment. And uh, some in aerobic processes, it also divided into two groups, aerobic hydrotrophic organisms, microorganisms. Uh, this is uh, the different difference differences between heterotrophic and autotrophic is uh, on a uh, carbon source. In heterotrophic microorganisms, the uh, carbon source is organics. And uh, for autotrophic microorganisms, the, the carbon source is uh, carbon dioxide. And so, in the traditional activated sludge process, usually we use aerobic heterotrophic microorganisms to treat wastewater, okay? And uh, for anaerobic, it also can divide into two uh, groups. Also heterotrophic, the carbon source is organics and uh, some autotrophic also, uh, the uh, carbon source is uh, carbon dioxide. And uh, in many processes, we use this kind of uh, microorganisms for wastewater treatment. And this is a very simple theory of uh, micro or biological treatment. And uh, we uh, microorganisms will get some uh, energy from substrate like organics, then it will grow up to produce many biomass, okay? And then the uh, organics in will produce carbon dioxide and methane. So the organics uh, in wastewater will produced to biomass and uh, uh, carbon dioxide water and methane. Then the organics will be transferred to solid phase such as biomass and uh, some of organics will transfer to uh, gas such as uh, carbon dioxide and methane, okay? And uh, this slide shows uh, differences between aerobic and anaerobic metabolism. Like uh, the slide shows, uh, we, the, the two processes input one kilogram COD, the same, okay? And the uh, effluent 10 kilograms COD, the same. And uh, the, in this process, uh, the the uh, removal efficiency is about 90%. And uh, the 90% organics in an aerobic bioreactor, about 85% organics will transfer to methane and carbon dioxide. And about 5% of organics will produce biomass that and it will be called sludge, okay? And uh, in aerobic process, in the, sa the, the same 19% 19, 19 efficiency, 
there will be about 40% organics will transfer to biomass or waste sludge and about half of uh, organics will produce uh, carbon dioxide and uh, water. So the most important in this slide is uh, uh, sludge yield. For anaerobic process, because the uh, metabolism of our microorganisms, it is a reduction reaction. So the, the, the uh, sludge yield will be very slow. And uh, for aerobic process, the sludge yield will be high. So the most different is here. And secondly, in aerobic uh, microorganism, we also need to input oxygen. For example, here, about uh, 100 kilowatt per hour power need to uh, operate the uh, blower to input oxygen for aerobic bioreactor. Okay, so from these uh, two differences between anaerobic and aerobic bioreactor, we can understand what happened in, in, in these two processes. And uh, we also can see, uh, this is uh, engineering uh, parameters for, for your re references. Uh, Usually, uh, one kilogram COD removed, then it will produce 0.5 cubic meter biogas. And uh, the biogas contains about 70% is methane gas. This is a uh, very roughly uh, engineering parameters, okay? And uh, the sludge yield here is very slow. Every one kilogram COD removed, it will produce about uh, 0 0.05 kilogram biomass, okay? And uh, the most different is here. And in aerobic bioreactor, it will be 0 0.2 or 0 0.4. So uh, when we want to apply anaerobic process in Taiwan or in India, uh, the most important thing is uh, how to get enough anaerobic sludge. In Taiwan, I think uh, we, uh, the, the Taiwan is very small and there are many anaerobic process around uh, in, in whole country. So we can get uh, anaerobic sludge very easily in Taiwan. However, in India, it, your country is very big. And uh, if the, the uh, anaerobic process is not that popular, uh, it is very uh, important how to get uh, uh, enough anaerobic sludge is uh, need to think first, then we can uh, use anaerobic process for wastewater treatment, okay? And uh, this is uh, uh, three kind of uh, uh, microorganisms used in wastewater treatment. And uh, for aerobic process, uh, most commonly is uh, activated sludge and some sequential bioreactor, so-called SBR or membrane bioreactor. It's all belongs to aerobic process, okay? And uh, in anaerobic process, usually we use a USB upflow anaerobic sludge bed or AFB anaerobic fluidized bed. And between aerobic and uh, anaerobic process, uh, there are another kind of uh, treatment process we call anoxic process. Uh, anoxic process mostly used for denitrification, okay? Organics and uh, nitrates will be uh, transferred to nitrogen gas and uh, carbon dioxide. Then it will finish the nitrate for uh, wastewater treatment. 
And uh, anoxic process uh, usually combined with uh, aerobic process. So we call it AO process for denitrification and uh, nitrification. Then after AO process, the uh, total, nitro total nitrogen will be uh, treat treated in wastewater treatment, okay? And uh, this slide shows a uh, very simple uh, environmental factors for biological treatment. And uh, we need to understand uh, first is temperature. Actually, temperature is uh, in, in around uh, 20 to 40 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, in this uh, range, higher temperature will be will get a higher uh, efficiency. And uh, if uh, the uh, temperature lower than 15, I think uh, the biological uh, process, the, the efficiency will be lower because the temperature is low. And in some uh, place uh, in India, maybe in the winter time, the temperature will lower than 10 or lower than five. Then it should be uh, heat up for uh, to to get higher temperature. Okay, and uh, second is uh, pH and uh, ORP. And for pH, it's uh, should be always should be nine to ten is better. Okay, for microorganism, and uh, for ORP, uh, there are three kind of uh, microorganisms have uh, different ORP. Uh, values for anaerobic process, the ORP should lower than minus 300 millivolt. And uh, for anoxic uh, denitrification process, the ORP will be uh, minus 50 to uh, positive 50 millivolt. And for aerobic, uh, always higher than uh, 50. So from point, ORP point of view, you can see uh, minus is a reduction, a chemical reaction is a reduction. And uh, it's a, when the ORP turns to positive, then it will be uh, oxidized chemical reactions. Okay, the third uh, important part is uh, nutrients. Uh, for aerobic or anaerobic process, uh, the target of a uh, pollutant is uh, organics, such as COD or BOD. And uh, when the microorganism grows or uh, metabolism need to some trace element, like, like uh, uh, nitrogen phosphate is a uh, uh, most uh, important nutrients. For example, we usually uh, calculate it 100 kilogram uh, COD removed need to input five kilogram nitrogen and one kilogram phosphate. This uh, is uh, for nitrogen and phosphate because uh, this nutrient needs to uh, produce uh, proteins the, the proteins for microorganisms. And also we need some trace element uh, like uh, ferrous, uh, nickel, copper, et cetera. It's uh, some heavy metals. It's uh, the, the, the uh, concentration of uh, trace elements is very few, but uh, we also need to input some nutrients for wastewater treatment then the microorganisms will be grow very healthy. Uh, like uh, we, we usually eat some vitamins, okay? And uh, the fourth part is uh, toxicity compounds. Uh, if we understand there are some toxicity compounds in your wastewater, uh, then we need some pretreatment to remove these toxics, then uh, introduce to a biological treatment process, okay? 
So this is the these four parameters or factors. Uh, you can if if the if the uh, uh, condition is around here, then uh, biological process will be fine for operation. Okay. And now I will introduce some uh, two processes, USB and AFB. I think uh, this slide shows a very simple uh, schematic of uh, an USB reactor. You can see it will be uh, the there are four parts of uh, USB, USB is uh, very important. The first is influent distributor because an USB is, uh, wastewater is uh, from bottom to up to, to the top. And uh, the whole reactor is, uh, I think uh, it's uh, empty inside. There are no mixing, not like the uh, aerobic process. You, you, we, we put oxygen inside, then the ox, ox, oxygen will uh, mix uh, wastewater and uh, substrate and microorganisms very well. So uh, in, in an USB, in influent distrib distribution will be a very important part, okay? And actually, we divide it uh, the in wastewater distribution uh, in every part of uh, the USB reactor. Then the wastewater will flow very smoothly in every where in, in every uh, place of the reactor. And after the uh, distribution the wastewater will uh, mix with a uh, sludge bed, okay? And sludge bed is a very uh, concentrated sludge, anaerobic sludge. And the, the concentration of uh, suspended solid here, it's about uh, 10 to 40,000 cubic meter per liter here. And after sludge bed, it will introduce to sludge blanket here, okay? And sludge blanket is uh, also the uh, anaerobic sludge, but the sludge concentration is lower because uh, this is a, uh, in, in, in sludge blanket part, uh, the sludge, it, is flock is uh, small, then it will suspend it uh, in the sludge blanket part. Okay, and after sludge bed and sludge blanket, wastewater will introduce to a solid liquid gas separator. Okay, uh, solid means uh, uh, microorganisms or sludge, and liquid is wastewater, and gas is a biogas. It will be separate in this device. You can see from this uh, picture, sludge will sediment here and go back to the uh, reactor and uh, wastewater will go through the slanting pipe and uh, go through the well where and then uh, go to the next stage. And the uh, biogas will be uh, collect here and then uh, use for uh, flare or uh, introduce to uh, power generator, etc., for some other uh, application. Okay, so this is a very uh, a simple USB reactor, and uh, this picture is a. Uh, a case, a case for petrochemical industry application. 
and uh, the shape of uh, the uh, USB can be uh, a cylinder type or some uh, rectangular type. It uh, depends on what you need to uh, lay out for the uh, USB reactor, okay? And uh, usually we have a granular sludge inside the uh, USB. You can see from this slide, uh, a very good USB reactor. Uh, the my anaerobic microorganism will grow like a, a small, a small ball. And uh, you can see from the picture, the size of a uh, granular sludge is about uh, one millimeter to three millimeter. And uh, if uh, the uh, USB have a uh, granular sludge, then I think uh, the op operation of the USB will be uh, very good for, for operation because the granular sludge, the density of a granular sludge is uh, higher then it can sediment in the sludge bed, sludge bed part of the USB. Then the wastewater go through the anaerobic uh, granular sludge. Then it will be, uh, there no, no problem for wash out of the anaerobic sludge. And, but uh, in some cases, uh, it will not produce granular sludge. So in that cases, uh, for example, in the petrochemical or chemical uh, industry, some uh, wastewater, it, it, in that kind of wastewater, it uh, will not produce uh, granular sludge. Then at that uh, moment, your reactor design should be uh, in lower upflow velocity to prevent the wash out of uh, anaerobic sludge. And this slide shows the uh, three phase separator and uh, uh, the wastewater from the bottom of the separator and uh, the sludge will collect by this slanting pipe and uh, go back to the react reactor. And uh, then this, uh, this pipe is a recycled pipe. When the sludge contains in the bottom of a separator, then it will be pumped back to the uh, USB to uh, recycle the sludge. Okay, and uh, this is picture is uh, in the bottom of uh, the USB. It's a distribution pipe. You can see every part of the reactor we uh, have uh, an uh, influent pipe, and wastewater can go through the bottom evenly up to the to the uh, sludge sludge bed and then smoothly go outside of the reactor this is a general pid for an usb and uh, we usually use a distribution tank and uh, the wastewater pump from equalize, equalization tank to this distribution tank, and we can uh, adjust pH here by acid and uh, caustic to maintain the good pH, and then wastewater will go through the uh, distribution tank directly to the USB. 
and uh, by gravity, and then water will be go go up for for the USB and uh, go through the three phase separator, then go to the uh, next next stage. Okay. And the second part of uh, anaerobic processes is, is uh, AFB. Yeah, AFB is an uh, anaerobic or anoxic fluidized bed reactor. You can see from this picture, uh, the AFB generally is a very, uh, is a tower shaped bioreactor. And uh, the most uh, different between AFB and US UASB is uh, there will be a very large recycle rate to maintain the sludge inside to fluidized bed. Okay, the rest part of the uh, uh, AFB is almost the same with the uh, USB. Okay. And in the AFB, we usually use a granular activated carbon or sand for carrier. And uh, we'll go back to this schematic picture, okay? The carrier inside the uh, uh, AFB is uh, fluidized and then uh, microorganism will grow on the uh, carrier and uh, uh, produce a biofilm on the surface of the carrier. And then this uh, uh, biofilm will uh, produce methane gas, then the wastewater can be treated uh, inside the reactor. Okay, this is uh, the picture from uh, pilot scale of uh, AFB. You can see the uh, uh, granular activated carbon suspended um, in, inside the uh, reactor. And uh, I think the most important of uh, AFB is uh, distribu dis distributor because uh, the uh, the recycle rate of uh, the AFB is very high and uh, the upflow velocity of AFB is about uh, uh, 30 to 40, uh, <coughs> 30 to 40 meter per hour. So it is very big uh, upflow velocity to maintain fluidized bed inside the reactor. So the uh, distribution is uh, very important. So we usually use uh, distributors for uh, inside the uh, uh, AFB reactor to get the enough uh, upflow velocity. And I think uh, for USB and AFB, the uh, metabolism of uh, microorganisms are the same, but uh, there are some differences. Uh, for example, in the reactor type, an AFB is a fluidized bed, and the uh, USB is a sludge bed. And uh, the recycle rate in F AFB is very high, and uh, in USB is slow, or you don't need any recycle. Okay, and uh, in the AFB, the mass transfer for substrate water and uh, microorganism is uh, by water, okay, by the high rate recycle to mix with the microorganism and the wastewater. And in the USB, the mass transfer is by biogas because uh, the uh, biogas produced, it will have some uh, little uh, mass transfer for uh, wastewater and uh, uh, microorganism. In the AFB, the most important part is a distributor, okay? And in the uh, USB, it will be 
uh, three phases, uh, so-called liquid, solid, and gas separator is important. Okay, and uh, in the shape of the reactor, in AFB is a uh, tower-like. It's a uh, very high. Uh, the it's about higher than 15, 15 to 20 meters high. And uh, for USB, it uh, will be short and white because uh, in, inside the AFB, the micro gas organism is gross on the carrier to produce biofilm. Then the washout problem is lower. And for USB, we should control the uh, uh, upflow velocity lower. So the shape of the reactor is short and white. Okay. And from the point of view in sludge, in AFB, the sludge is uh, density is higher because uh, there are the, the sludge is contained with the uh, carrier. So the, the density is higher than USB. And uh, for uh, operation, uh, COD concentration is uh, from uh, low, low to high. For example, uh, about uh, uh, 100 milligram per liter COD to about uh, uh, thousands milligram per liter uh, COD can be treated by AFB. And in the USB, the COD range is uh, from uh, usually hundreds to thousand. And in some cases, even 10,000 COD can be treated in USB. And uh, in the AFB, the carrier is very important. And the USB, how to maintain granular sludge is very important. And uh, for application, uh, in some cases, uh, AFB can be treated with some biological inhibition wastewater because uh, there are very large recycle rate. For this uh, large recycle rate, some bio biological inhibition compounds concentration will be diluted by uh, this, this uh, high recycle rate. So in some uh, inhibition wastewater for like, uh, like uh, petrochemical or chemical industries, then you can, we can use uh, AFB for uh, some toxic wastewater treatment. And also AFB can be applied for denitrification. Okay, uh, we, in, in Taiwan, we can use AFB only for denitrification process to treat nitrate wastewater. Okay, this is the uh, differences between USB and uh, AFB. And uh, uh, the third part of uh, my talk is uh, aerobic process. And uh, I will introduce uh, Itri's BioNet process. And uh, also in this slide, I will give you an application for ammonia removal for uh, pre-treatment pre of uh, drinking water. And first, uh, I think uh, I will introduce what is a uh, BioNet. And the uh, BioNet process, uh, sorry, BioNet process is uh, apply a porous carrier which have uh, large surface areas inside the uh, bionet reactor. Then the carrier, a uh, porous carrier can apply for uh, filtration and uh, biofilms operation. So uh, inside the reactor, you can see from this picture, uh, many, many carriers will input into the reactor and uh, the surfaces of the carrier 
microorganism will grow on the surface of uh, the carrier and then prevent wash out of the sludge. So in some autotrophic uh, microorganism of location such as ammonia removal, and then uh, most uh, nitrification microorganism can capture by the uh, carrier, then you can get very good ammonia removal efficiency. Okay. And uh, this uh, picture shows uh, different types of uh, E-trees bionet carrier. And uh, you can see the most uh, different between these, uh, these uh, carriers is a uh, surface area. And uh, B30 is the most uh, common application in Taiwan. And in some other cases, we can use the uh, lower surface area because uh, for denitrification application, uh, it will produce nitrogen uh, nitrogen gas. So the large uh, lower surface area means uh, the porous is high. Uh, porous is uh, large. Then it can easily degase to prevent the flotation of the carrier, okay? So you can see the specific surface area for a uh, bionet carrier is very high from uh, about uh, 6,000 to about 8,000 uh, cubic meter, okay? And this picture shows the, uh, sorry, shows the new bionet carrier. You can see the pores uh, from the uh, picture. And uh, after operation, the microorganism will be grow on the uh, surface of the uh, bionet carrier. Then uh, these organisms will uh, treat uh, organics or ammonia inside the uh, wastewater. And uh, BioNet is uh, very uh, uh, useful in wastewater treatment. And uh, there are many kinds of uh, applications like uh, organics removal, ammonia removal, and uh, nitrate re removal also can be applied uh, in BioNet processes, okay? And uh, for wastewater treatment, uh, the the uh, bionet usually used for tertiary biological treatment. It means uh, after secondary process, a uh, secondary treatment. For example, after activated sludge process, we can use bionet to polish the organics to lower than maybe fifty or uh, thirty to fifty milligram per liter. Okay, and we also can use for drinking water pretreatment to, to remove ammonia. And some low strength wastewater treatment also can be applied for bionet process. Okay, the, so I will give you a uh, case study for uh, pretreatment of surface water treatment. And uh, uh, we apply the uh, bionet for uh, river water to remove uh, ammonia. And uh, the ammonia concentration in this river uh, varied uh, widely because uh, the, the, uh, it's uh, in a rainy day or dry season or rainy season. So in the dry season, the ammonia concentration will be higher to about uh, 10 to 12 milligram per liter. And uh, this high ammonia concentration will uh, influence, uh, influence uh, to the tap water and get some problem. So uh, we 
if we applied BioNet process to for the uh, treatment for this uh, city water uh, processes. And uh, after about uh, a year's operation, you can see the uh, total organic carbon removal is about uh, 40% in 19 minutes hydraulic retention time. And if the HRT shortened to about 15 minutes, the PLC removal is about uh, decreased to about uh, uh, 20 percent. And for ammonia removal, even in higher HRT or lower HRT, the efficiency is, uh, all, is uh, usually higher than 90 percent. Okay, so in ammonia removal, the bionet process is very uh, efficiency in Taiwan. And this is uh, this is the uh, this case, uh, the client of of this project is a Taiwan Water Company, which uh, produced the tap water for whole country. Okay, and uh, the water the wastewater treated is uh, from uh, river water in southern Taiwan. And uh, the uh, capacity of the, the project is uh, uh, treated 300,000 cubic meter per day of the uh, river water. And uh, the bionet reactor volume is about 10,000 cubic meter. And uh, ammonia concentration is lower than 10 and uh, the effluent of ammonia nitrogen is uh, lower than one. Okay, so uh, this process is uh, from river and pump to bionet reactor to remove ammonia. And then the treated water uh, will stored in reservoir and then go to the water treatment process for uh, tap water, tap water, tap for produced tap water, okay? And uh, I think this is a very uh, successful process in Taiwan and uh, it can uh, reduce the dosage of uh, chlorine in water treatment process. And uh, this is a picture for the for this case and uh, this is finished in 20 and six, 10, 10, 26, uh, 2016. okay the capacity is uh, 300,000 cubic meter per day and uh, the whole react reactor volume, is uh, 10,000 cubic meter. It's a very large uh, bionet reactor in, in, in Taiwan, okay? And uh, after the treatment, ammonia can lower than one, cube, uh, one milligram per liter. Uh, and uh, the water quality is, uh, can be used for tap water treatment. And this process also uh, applied in other, uh, in, in many countries, such as uh, Indonesia and uh, Malaysia, we also have uh, the same process for uh, water treatment, pretreatment process. Okay, this is uh, my talk. And uh, I think well, after, Thank you, Dr. Chang. I think that was very interesting. And I think everybody's uh, attention, you really got everybody's attention with the last slide as well, the bionet treatment, but uh, the presentation was really good. It was excellent. Yeah, this one, uh, I think, piqued all our interest uh, because as you know, in China, especially, we have uh, terrible rivers. They're very uh, quite, they need a lot of, uh, they, they're very polluted. 
So uh, thank you so much. And maybe we could have some questions from the audience. I know everybody has a lot of questions before we go on to the next uh, part of the session. Uh, so we've got some questions. We've gotten a few questions. Uh, uh, we've got a question does, from Mr. Muhammad, who would like to know, does the UASB reactor, is it suitable for textile influent uh, any pre any precondition should we keep in consideration? Does the gas pressure is it enough for other useful purposes? Okay, I think for textile wastewater, uh, if the uh, wastewater is uh, biodegradable, I think uh, USB will be fine. But uh, only one uh, parameter you need to understand first is uh, chlorine concentration, okay? In some textile, you the chlorine concentration is uh, higher. And uh, in our experiences, the chlorine concentration higher than uh, about uh, 5,000 cubic meter per liter, then the anaerobic microorganisms will be uh, inhibited. So, the chlorine concentration is the key parameters for USB applied for textile wastewater. Okay. Uh, then is the um, then we've got a question from Mr. Balchand who, who wants to know for the city of Chennai they have we have our uh, three rivers which are all very highly polluted. Can this be treated with bionet? Can the reactor be mounted on a movable platform so that it can be taken off during the monsoon? Monsoon. <laughs> I think the it's uh, the 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 in that cases we need to uh, uh, calculate for the the water you need to treat. Of course, we have some cases for 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 rivers, and uh, but uh, uh, it uh, is uh, very I think uh, difficult for construct the uh, such uh, big reactors for 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 river, and uh, I think uh, if we we can get some. Uh, get more information about uh, this case, then we can get, give you some uh, suggestions or for application of a bionet. Yeah, uh, especially because I think since the uh, hydraulic retention time is so low, our your reactor sizes are, is, are as well quite on the smaller yes. side for treating such large capacities. Uh, we have another question from Mr. Ganesh Kumar Pandian who would like to know what is the maximum capacity of AFB reactor designed and constructed in Taiwan for municipal water treat wastewater treatment? Okay, uh, the largest uh, USB reactor is about uh, uh, 10,000 cubic meter and uh, this case is for petrochemical industry and uh, the wastewater is a PTA, you know, PTA, PTA wastewater. And uh, this is the largest uh, uh, reactor in Taiwan. And uh, the, the, the uh, COD concentration is about uh, 5,000 milligram per liter in that case. Okay, uh, we've got um, another question. Uh, I think I scroll past, but the question was, uh, what is the life, what's the lifetime of the Bionet media? And uh, lifetime, uh, in our experience, the every year we need to uh, input the new Bionet carrier about uh, uh, 5% of the reactor because the bionet inside the reactor after aeration it will be smaller by erosion you know then 
the lifetime is very long, but uh, after, after erosion, then we need to put about 5% a year of the mm -hmm. new carrier inside the reactor. Okay, so five percent every year. Okay, yeah, that's quite. Is is this uh, across all uh, any type of application, or is it uh, like for STP and wastewater treatment for industrial effluent, or for every every industrial application, you have to top up five percent? Yeah, yeah, almost the five percent. All the, the the same percentage. Okay, uh, so maybe we can take uh, one last question. Um, we've got. Um, yeah, uh, what is the difference between your MBBR and Bionet? So I, uh, MBBR and Bionet reactor. Okay, uh, MBBR is a moving bed, uh, moving bed bioreactor. And uh, the, the, most, the differences between MBBR and Bionet is, uh, uh, I think uh, the carrier percentage of uh, the reactor. For example, uh, MBBR usually the carrier is about uh, 20 to 30 percent of the reactor, the volume, uh, carrier volume. And uh, in Bionet, uh, we usually design about uh, 60 to 70 percent of the reactor volume. So the Bionet. Uh, is a biofilm processes, but it has another another uh, another advantage of uh, uh, filtration. You can you can use biomass for uh, filtration uh, filtration apply to get higher quality of uh, wastewater treatment. But MBBR is only, uh, bio, is only for biofilm application. So the, the start up time for Bionet, it will be short, shortened than MBBR process, okay? Okay, so and also I think the uh, reactor volume that you require is very different for MBBR and Bionet as well. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Chang. I think that was excellent. We've had we've got lots more questions, but we will try and send you out an email to all the uh, people who ask questions, and hopefully we should try and answer these uh, questions. Thank you again, Dr. Chang, for joining us for this, uh, for the first half of the session on the biological treatments of uh, anaerobic and aerobic treat processes. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, so, thank you, thank you. Uh, for our next session, next half of the session, we will be discussing e tree strategies for sludge reduction in the wastewater treatment, wastewater treatment process. And they will be talking about uh, the ultrasound hydrolysis treatment for waste, waste sludge or ultrasound sludge hydrolysis system, USHS, which has been developed by the water division at e -Tree. So joining us for this session is Dr. Xing De Chen who is the manager of the water division at the Material Chemical Research Lab at e Taiwan. Uh, he has more than two decades of extensive experience in wastewater treatment. He's developed a set of wastewater treatment technologies, including high efficiency sludge treatment system, integrated biological treatment and bioenergy recovery from waste and wastewater treatment and this has all been developed at a commercial scale as well in Taiwan. Thank you, Dr. Chen, Chen for joining us uh, for this session. So over to you, thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, I am Xinda Chen. So the next, uh, so let me start my presentation, okay? Uh, Okay, uh, the next uh, title is uh, each is a strategy for uh, sludge reduction uh, in the wastewater treatment process. 
So in this topic, uh, we debate the uh, one hydrolysis system. You, you can watch from the, the slide. It's a, I use the ultrasonic, it's a very pow powerful tool for a sludge reduction. So uh, today I will, I will, I will introduce the, the system of the ultrasonic and uh, then I will introduce uh, some application and uh, case study about this system. So the first, uh, I think that everybody knows the wastewater treatment process. Here I list, uh, it's a, uh, we can cut we can get uh, three kinds of uh, sludge from the wastewater uh, treatment. Like uh, first day, the primary sludge, and the second is a secondary sludge, and the other is a chemical sludge. And in Taiwan, we usually combine these three kinds of uh, waste sludge into the sludge treatment process, like here, and then and go into the uh, final dispos disposal uh, pros process. But here I need to mention that today I, my tool, my ultrasonic assistant, I usually use in this position. It's a, uh, I think the secondary sludge, the waste uh, secondary sludge is my target because uh, uh, the, the only one uh, parameter uh, is a uh, uh, higher organic ratio of the waste starch. I think uh, you can understand uh, this this reason. So uh, ultrasounds. Uh, I think everybody knows. Uh, now I everyone can hear my voice. Then the the frequency of my voice is uh, located between two and 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. In this, air, in this range, the voice, everybody can hear the, the voice, but others like uh, infrasound and the ultrasound, I think the, uh, the voice we cannot hear, but actually it is, uh, uh, but it exists, so, for my application on the uh, sludge reduction, I use the ultrasound because the, uh, the characteristic of the ultrasound is uh, uh, they have a two, two dimension. First, is, uh, uh, it has a, a higher, uh, in, in, higher impact to the uh, solid. And the second topic is a uh, it can produce the more free radical in the water. So you can use it to, to, the, uh, to be the AOP process in the wastewater treatment. But today, I intro today my topic is uh, uh, sludge reduction. So I use the ultrasound to be the uh, uh, hydrolysis uh, tool. And in this slide, I want to show you the mechanical of uh, the mechanical and the mechanism the mechanism of the ultrasound. The most people accept that this is a cavitation. The cavitation the cavitation is uh, caused by the the bubble in the water. When the bubble uh, collapses then you will produce the, it's a very small area. We call it, it's a hot spot. Then you will produce the very high temperature and very large uh, pressure here. And it will produce in a short time. So in this, in this, uh, in, in that time, the sludge around the bubble, then you will hit by the, the higher pressure, then it will be easy to decompose the structure of the sludge. That's how we want this in the process. So this slide I show you, uh, there, there are different uh, application 
of the ultrasound in the wastewater treatment process. The first you can see here, this is uh, uh, the ultrasound can can use to control uh, the bucking the bucking pro problem in the wastewater process. And it means the uh, it means the, the ultrasound can kill the fermentous material if the bucking uh, problem happen in the in the in the wastewater treatment process. The second one is uh, this is a uh, uh, useful uh, the 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 biomass concentration control in the in the aeration tank because the ultrasound can can control the biomass concentration in the recycle uh, sludge and the three and the four purpose for the uh, uh, ultrasounds is to to be the uh, pretreatment pretreatment function for the waste sludge from the primary sludge and the secondary sludge. If they combine together, it means uh, here the five purpose for uh, ultrasound. It's uh, the same to be the uh, pretreatment tool for uh, wastewater sludge into the anaerobic digest. There is another purpose for the ultrasound here, the six. It's a, it can control the biomass concentration for the anaerobic digester. But today, I, later I show you, I use the, the ultrasound to be the, the tool, like a first, fourth purpose here. And the, the slide uh, you can see this. This is our uh, new version of the uh, ultrasonic sludge hydrolysis system. The core technology is uh, like uh, the right side of the slide. It's a ultrasonic os oscillator. It's a. This is a. You see the box, this is the power supply, and uh, this is a mechanical uh, system for uh, ultrasound production. Then the left side, you can see that this is a typical uh, photo for the system. Now. It contains the two set, two set of uh, ultrasonic os oscillator. Um, in our system, we can design the very, I think uh, it's a very free to design the system. And it depends on the, the amount of the waste, uh, waste sludge in the plant. Later, I show you the uh, different uh, test of this system. First, uh, it's a laboratory scale, the test. I spend, uh, I think, I spend uh, almost uh, three or four years for this. In lab laboratory scale, the test, uh, I combine the uh, astrosonic and uh, activate sludge process. You can see the upper left side, the result I show you. The flow rate of the ultrasound is a uh, it's not very, very large, but the, the, the sludge reduction, the, the, the efficiency of sludge reduction is very high. This, this situation, uh, I want to know the, the, the maxima, the maxima uh, efficiency of sludge reduction for this system that I can reach. And the uh, right side is uh, the ultrasound combined with the uh, anaerobic digestion. This, this 
This result, I want to know. I want to know the efficiency of the sludge reduction, and then the other is the biogas production. We find the uh, we find from the literature, it if I combine the ultrasound and the anaerobic digestion, it usually can achieve the a uh, higher uh, promotion of uh, biogas production. So in this case, I got the uh, uh, 42 percentage of the uh, sludge reduction and the 55 percentage promotion for uh, biogas production. It's a very good uh, result. And for the pilot scale, here I show you is a uh, one. The left side is a uh, the one cubic meter for the aeration tank. The right side is a 10 cubic meter for the aeration tank. I use the different uh, parameter, parameter a different flow rate for a redoubt. You can see that uh, if I use the fuel, it's a fuel, <laughs> it's a lower flow rate, then I can get a very high the, uh, percentage of a sludge reduction. But if I use the 20, 20 times for a flow rate, then I I still can get the uh, the very good result for a sludge reduction. This is for a uh, uh, one cubic meter uh, aeration tank. For a uh, 10 cubic meter, it still has a higher uh, percentage of a sludge reduction. This is uh, for a pilot scale test. And uh, later I will show you uh, here I list the five case study of the system. First, it's a uh, one chemical company. This company is located in the north of Taiwan, and you can this company produce a very lot of uh, chemical. And here you can see the information of the, uh, the background. It's uh, like a uh, sludge production in this plant. Uh, it's a uh, 5.2 tons per month. It serves as a sludge kit, and the water content is uh, uh, 85 percent. And uh, in for this plant, uh, the fee for the uh, sludge treatment it is a uh, 200, almost 240 US dollar per ton. It means the, the company need to pay, uh, need to pay around 50, almost 50,000 US dollar per year. But in this, in this case, I designed uh, the system. Uh, the ultrasonic uh, oscillator is a one. It's only one set because the the sludge, the amount of sludge is not very large, and the, the system capacity is uh, uh, the higher. It's a uh, it's higher to seven tons per day, and after I think after around three months. Three months. Uh, I mean, the, it runs almost the three months. Then he can get the result about uh, uh, from thirty percent to fifty percent. But it's uh, unfortunately after that there is a uh, accident. <laughs> it's a uh, you know in Taiwan we have a lot of typhoon in summer then in this plant they have uh, they have uh, they meet uh, a, a huge typhoon so they have a lot of uh, seawater into the plant so they need to stop the the system it's a uh, not a very good <laughs> so this slide show the process of the 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 wastewater treatment and then I set up the ultrasound system. It's a, you can see the red color direction. Now, the first, uh, in this case, uh, the first, uh, I, I want to increase the 
concentration of wastewater sludge. Usually we can find the waste sludge from the sedimentation tank. The concentration is usually almost usually up to one percentage. But uh, in my study, the the concentration, the best concentration is uh, around the two percent to three percent. This is the better for the system. So in in this case, I said one concentration tank and it can increase the concentration of waste starch from 1% to about 2% then into the ultrasonic system. After that, the, the, the sludge I designed go into the anaerobic uh, system because usually we can get the more biogas production from the anaerobic uh, tank. So in this case, I designed this um, tool to increase the, the biogas production. So the second case, it's uh, the same. It's, uh, it's the same company. It's uh, one chemical company, but this company is uh, located in south of Taiwan. It's a uh, different compared with the last, the, the, the case one. And in, in this plant, the sludge production is uh, four tons per month. Actually, this, is, this amount is not very high. Uh, here I list that it's uh, only one, uh, it's uh, the western sludge is from, uh, the western sludge come from aeration tank one. There is two aeration tank in, in this plant. No? And the fee for the uh, uh, sludge treatment is uh, uh, around uh, 370 US dollar per ton. And in this plant, they paid, uh, they paid uh, uh, almost uh, uh, 17,800 17, US dollar for the uh, sludge treatment per year. So in this case, uh, I designed a system uh, include one ultrasonic oscillator and the capacity of the system is seven times per day. And the result, they, they gave me the, the sludge production is around 70% uh, seven, to 40%. And the, the process of the wastewater treatment like the, in this slide, you can see that they have uh, two different tank for aeration. One is an uh, activated sludge system, and the other is an uh, MBR system. But the waste sludge I take, they come from the acti activated sludge tank. So this is uh, the normal design, I think, for uh, the most case to do the sludge reduction. And the third case I show here, it, this is it's a quite different. This company is a gluten factory and they meet a problem, but this is not for the uh, sludge reduction. The problem for the wastewater treatment is uh, uh, they, they use starch particle to, to make some uh, different kind of, uh, this is the food company. They have a different uh, product they made from starch. So the problem is uh, the starch particle. The, the starch particle cannot be decompose completely in, in the, the whole wastewater treatment process. It's mean, it, it means it uh, means you can find the starch particle in the effort, effort. and uh, the COD in the effort is higher than 3,000 milligram per liter. This is uh, not this is uh, illegal in, illegal in Taiwan. And 
usually we need to meet the 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 law is a the COD in the effort that need to the concentration need to lower than 100 milligram per liter and the excess concentration in the effort is lower than uh, 30 milligram per liter and it, in this plant they have uh, two different tank two different volume tank of the USB this is uh, used for the uh, biogas production, especially th this plant has a, a power generator for uh, biogas. So they want to make the more biogas production, then they can get the more electricity from the biogas. And it still has a aerobic aeration tank. So I designed the system it's a different function for the system. It's uh, the flow rate for the wastewater is around 10 to 20 cubic meter per day. So I designed the ultrasonic uh, oscillator is a three set and the capacity for this system is a high, a high to uh, 21 pounds per day. And the readout, they, they tried uh, the starch particle size can reduce the uh, uh, reach to almost 90%. And the uh, COD concentration in the effluent is uh, uh, 50, from 50 to 60 milligram per liter. And the uh, excess concentration in the, in the effluent is lower than 10 milligram per liter. The wastewater process is uh, like it is in this site. You can find this. The original one process is uh, wastewater into the uh, uh, storage tank and into the equilibrization tank, then into the USB to produce a biogas. And after the USB is an aeration tank. And But then I, design this red color line. From the equilibrization tank, the starch particle into the ultrasonic and then into the USB, you can find the readout. I use the uh, particle size and the size. Then you can find before the ultrasound, the diameter is higher than this, this number. Then after that, you can find this, this you, you can calculate the, the, the particle size is reduced almost 90%. It's a very effective tool for this situation. And the fourth case study is uh, for, uh, for one semiconductor factor. It's, uh, this company is located in the middle of Taiwan. And uh, it's, the, the their product is a supply their product is a, the supplier chain for Apple. So they earn a lot of money. So you can find that uh, the such production, the amount of such production is four tons per per month. Actually, this is not very large. Yeah. And the fee for a such treatment is uh, around uh, uh, one 170 US dollar per ton. So they spend uh, uh, 80, among almost 80 thousand uh, US dollar per year. In this case, uh, they have uh, MBR in the wastewater treatment process. So the, the waste sludge, the concentration of waste sludge is almost 1%. One, 1%. Um, I calculate the sludge amount, the waste, the amount of waste sludge is almost uh, four, four, 14 tons per day. But I designed the ultrasonic oscillator is a uh, four set. It's uh, because uh, the, the, the people in this plant, they, they told me they have, uh, uh, they have uh, a plant to, increase the, the, the amount of a product 
because they have a they they guess they have a, a more order from the apple so they they ask me to design the the more ultrasonic uh, uh, oscillator it means the, the system capacity is uh, rich to 28 tons per day but actually they they now they they just reach half of the capacity so it's usually i think uh, i can say that this is a over design for <laughs> for the situation so here they they have the result of the sludge reduction so now they have a two years operation but they didn't have a waste water from waste the sludge from the the waste water treatment process it's a uh can i say that it's a very strange situation for a for a waste water treatment process if usually it, if it is more no more operation then it should have the uh, 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 it should have a, a, a quite amount for a waste, waste sludge. But now they didn't have the waste sludge from the uh, waste water treatment process. It's uh, very tricky. <laughs> so, the, so the waste water process is this the light in this slide. Uh, the wastewater from the, the company and into the equalization tank. They have a pH adjustment and the chemical mix tank. It means uh, they have a uh, co-occuration and the fracturation in this unit. And then sedimentation tank. Then into the USB, they have a biogas production here. Then the final one is the MBR. The waste surgery is a, uh, here from the MBR system. Then I set the ultrasonic here. Then after that, the sludge will go into the USB to produce more biogas. So the next is uh, the sixth case. This case, if you remember, the Dr. Zhang have said that there's one company they produce the more petrochemical products. This is a very large company in Taiwan. So you can find the sludge production is uh, 6.3 tons per day. This is a per, day, per day or not per month. So you can calculate every year this company will produce a lot of waste sludge. And especially here, I, I, I list the water content is only 35 percentage. It means the, the, the sludge cake, they have uh, one dryer unit to reduce the water content. And the fee for the sludge treatment is uh, around uh, 300 US dollars per ton. So the company, they need to pay the uh, 700,000 US dollars per year. It's cost, the cost is very high. So the system I designed, the ultrasonic oscillator, it needs uh, 30, uh, 30 set of the ultrasonic oscillator in this uh, if they want to do the sludge reduction and the capacity of the system is a uh, rich uh, rich 210 tons per day and here at least the sludge reduction is around uh, 50 from 50 to to, uh, from 40 to 50 percentage. And the biogas production near up to 20, 19%. This is uh, the result I got from the pilot, pilot test. 
this company, I tried uh, eight months for a pilot test and the result I got is a the sludge reduction I can and the, it, the, the system can reach 55 percentage and the biogas production increased uh, to 19 percentage and the pay the payback time is around 2.9 years I think this is uh, acceptable for to the company there their limitation for a payback time is usually three years. And the uh, wastewater treatment process uh, is, is uh, like this. They, the wastewater into a USB and they have uh, two different kind of aeration tank. First the one is uh, uh, IC, it's a deep aeration system. And the second one is uh, the normal uh, activated sludge system. The three kind of waste sludge, they combine together and then uh, into the ultrasonic system. And after that, when, and after that, go into the USB system. So this is the final uh, case study I test. Actually, I have uh, several cases, but today I just show the five uh, typical case study for the uh, uh, ultrasonic uh, system. So then uh, after, after the presentation, I think you can, uh, you can get the, the information of, about the ultrasonic system. It's a very uh, powerful tool and a high intensity tool for the solid uh, into uh, solid solid decomposition. So uh, so it's a it's a, all my presentation if. You have uh, any question, uh, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Chen. That was quite a nice detailed presentation on the sludge treatment. Very interesting to see uh, cost savings as well uh, from using the treatment process. So I think that was... Uh, so uh, we've got quite a few questions. Uh, so if anybody, all the attendees, if you have questions, if you could just put it in the Q&A box, we will try and answer as many as possible. So we've got a question from uh, Mr. Vishwanathan who said in case study A, the secondary sludge is sent to anaerobic reactor after volume reduction by the ultrasound to increase biogas production. If the biogas production is to be increased, why not to send the whole secondary sludge without reduction by ultrasound and further increase the biogas production? It's uh, the role of the the role of the ultrasonic. It's uh, I think it's it is uh, for the hydrolysis. It's not for the whole reaction of the. Uh, the sludge reduction. Usually we need to combine the ultrasound and uh, uh, any one biological unit to, to do the, the sludge reduction. So here I need to have the ultrasound to, to do the uh, pretreatment for the sludge reduction. So let's... Uh, Okay. It's a, another parameter for the system. I need to calculate the organic loading for the biological for the biological unit. If it is higher than the design parameter, then actually I cannot uh, uh, put the all waste sludge into the 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 into the the system. That's a 
that's a very important we need to know first okay uh, we've got uh, another question from Mr. Muhammad. Would like to know what are the elements produced from sludge that reduced by ultrasound system? If no sludge, if there's no sludge produced for a long time, is it a good sign for the NBR performance? Uh, After the ultrasound treatment, usually we can find that uh, the the soluble COD in the in the sludge is it will increase after treatment. Then usually we use the soluble sludge for the next utilization, like uh, biogas production. So the the element produce from the sludge. I think is it uh, the I think it will contain the material in the cell. It will re reduce to the, the, the liquid. And this is uh, good for the biological reaction. So so it can increase the biogas production or convert it to the carbon dioxide if we use the aeration tank. It's awesome for MBR. For the MBR system, actually in my, in my experiment, I got the sign for that. Usually, the western sludge from the MBR system, we can find it because uh, the, the SRT, the, the sludge retention time for the MBR is uh, very long. Usually, if I use the ultrasound to have the hydrolysis for the sludge from the MBR, I, usually it cannot have a good result. I mean that I can I compare the readout with the activate sludge, the waste sludge from the activate sludge. Usually, uh, the, for the MBR system, it it cannot get a very good uh, readout for a, for a, for the hydrolysis efficiency. If no sludge for a long time, it's a good sign for MBR. For uh, if I use the uh, ultrasound for a sludge reduction, it's a very important uh, to monitor the uh, v the the rate the parameter the parameter of the the ratio of the VSS over SS, this parameter means uh, um, the organic ratio of the uh, biomass in the system. If I use the ultrasound to do to, to do the uh, sludge reduction, it means uh, the ratio of uh, VSS to SS will become lower. So. So you, I think uh, it's very important to monitor the permit uh, for long-term operation. It's uh, very important. Okay, uh, we've got one more question from uh, which Mr. Srinivasan and some uh, two, three others have asked as well, is what is the power consumption for the ultrasound system? It's a... Uh, the system I designed, the power consumption for each one oscillator is uh, around 500 watt. It's a power, power for, for each one oscillate, o oscillator. And the operation cost of it per ton of starch. Usually, uh, it's another tree cost. I mean, the 
every 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 cubic meter. Uh, I mean the. I have a calculator. It takes the uh around. It takes around the uh around the three thousand Taiwan dollar. How much is the US dollar? Six thousand rupees. Six thousand It it takes a uh, six thousand rupee for each cubic meter sludge, but the the sludge is a disappear, not the treatment. I mean the uh how to how to explain it's not for a treat treatment fee. I mean the uh for each each cubic meter sludge. Uh, 那個不是處理費,那是每一噸的問題,需要花這些錢。It's around the 6000 rupee for a okay. treatment fee. Operating cost. Is that the operating cost you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Operating cost that means uh, we need to calculate the fee of the electricity. It mm. means uh, if uh, I I operated uh, for 24 hours per day, so it means the 24 hour times 0 0.5 kilowatt. This is the for the fee of the electricity. It's a, it's a about the 12 kilowatt hour of electricity per okay. day. Okay. 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 Uh, I think we have a few more questions, but I think the remaining questions, uh, uh, because with time constraints, we will try and answer it and send it out by email. Thank you, uh, Dr. Okay. Chen, for joining us for this session. It was very informative and uh, I think very interesting to see this new technology and uh, we hope to see it in application in India soon. So as all of you uh, attendees know, uh, Sersen Technologies has a collaboration with uh, Eatree Water Division. We're promoting the technologies in India. So if you would like to know more information about the technologies or would like to see it applied at your treatment facility, please do reach out to us. We are currently, we've run um, in collaboration with Elifo, we are, uh, E3 has had successful pilot plant trials of the BioNet system and they're currently running uh, the EDR as well. So thank you everybody for joining us for this session. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Thank you to Dr. Chang as well for hosting the, uh, have, uh, having the excellent first half session. Uh, we will be giving uh, all the participants a certificate of participation as well in the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Chang. <laughs> For joining us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chen, and uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you. If you have any questions, please do uh, send it out by email to me. You all have my email address, and uh, hope to see you all again soon in the real world. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, before I sign off, uh, we will be hosting a series of webinar sessions with uh, Etri where they will be discussing their uh, technologies. The next one should be uh, in the next fortnight. We will be discussing their advanced oxidation process. More details of this, we will send it out to you by email. It will be on our LinkedIn page as well. This webinar session will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Now, thank you, bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye, bye Dr. Chang, bye Dr. Chang. Bye. Bye. <laughs>